Callian, I'm really excited to catch up with you here on the Keysight stand at Mobile World Congress. And uh, before we talk about where Open RAN goes as we move towards 6G, I wanted to maybe take stock of where we've been. We've been talking Open RAN since 2018, and it used to be a conversation of, is this a viable architecture? Where do you see us today? Fantastic, thank you, Sean, for stopping by. And it's an excellent question, because Open RAN has been there, and it's uh, now about to fulfill its promise, finally. I think a lot of the work has been in trying to get the new vendors as well as the existing vendors to interoperate. And uh, that's taken a while because the standards uh, have to emerge as well as there's been a lot of experimentation. But I think finally it's getting to the point where it's very clear what are the ingredients of the disaggregation that have to come through. And uh, there is a lot of trials already going on and some of the operators have already uh, taken flight with it. So I think it's uh, just at the point where things are starting to take off. Yeah, we've got some really scaled out multi-vendor uh, deployments in multiple geographies, and that's the result of interoperability work between those vendors, and I know Keysight's been uh, instrumental in getting it to where we are today. So I guess the next question is, where do we go as we start to scope out 6G and begin the standardization work? What from Open RAN pulls forward into that? Very good question again. I think uh, Frontal is a good example of something that is maturing really well and that should stay. There will be some improvements to that as the radio and the, the baseband get separated out. You're going to start seeing more massive antenna arrays and things like that that you'll have to deal with. But overall the Frontal is a good one where you will see some evolution on top of it but large part it's going to stay how it is. The second thing that's going to happen is the whole concept of separating out applications. You know, the R apps and X apps, now people are talking about D apps. So starting to see apps come into the edge of the network as well for low latency. I think that's another area where you will see a lot of uh, you know, innovation come in. And these are going to be things that carry over from Open RAN into the 6G realm. Yeah, when we start to think about the RAN intelligent controller and the different types of apps that can really support really powerful capabilities for operators. What do you see as the role of AI and automation going forward? And um, you know, you mentioned D-apps, that's certainly a nascent and exciting area, but just how should we be thinking about the trajectory of uh, moving from stable, interoperable RAN to layering in RIC and multiple X-apps, R-apps, hopefully sometime soon some D-apps, and then what does that mean for our industry longer term? It's certainly, uh uh, very clearly it is separating out the network into applications and separating out the in intelligence, I would say, distributing it. Very clearly that plays a major uh, role overall. Now you mentioned about AI and automation. Those are absolutely required and things are already starting to happen there. AI RAN alliances uh, started out last year uh, around the same time as MWC. I think it was announced here last year. But now you see a lot of momentum there uh, in terms of AI and RAN kind of co-locating or uh, you know, the workloads are, they call it AI and RAN. You know, on the edge you can see that a lot or even what is the effect of AI working with the workloads from the RAN. And then you got AI for RAN, which is going to get even more interesting because now you're really starting to apply AI towards the spectral efficiencies and some of the baseband algorithms and so on. That's when AI truly comes into the picture. But all of this also has an automation layer that becomes vital because as you keep making these changes, which happens with disaggregated networks a lot more because things are going to get upgraded uh, far too sooner than what you're used to. Automation is the only way to make sure that things are still operational and working the way they should be. So I think there's just a lot of things that are intertwined, but I think automation is a baseline that has to happen and AI is infusing itself very quickly into this whole uh, realm and paradigm. Yeah, I sat through an operator-led panel yesterday and the big question was essentially, what do you, the operator, want from 6G? And I think to summarize the responses, it was something that's simplified compared to 5G, something that is autonomous, and then the last one was something that was ubiquitous, which kind of gets us into this NTN area. So how are you thinking about integration of terrestrial and non-terrestrial networks? And that's uh, the NTN and TN are starting, that uh, uh, you know uh, merging is starting to happen as we speak. And that's kind of separate from 6G, but it's going to carry on into 6G. Clearly, there's just a lot of interest there with Leos coming on board and just uh, the whole connectivity. You know, you're on a plane, it's nowadays asking you, do you want to connect to the satellite, which is very interesting. So things like that are starting to happen far sooner 
and that will that trajectory or that realm of use cases will flow over into 6G as well because uh, I, I think uh, you can see that there's a lot of momentum and also a lot of additional momentum or movement into uh, you know, the industry that NTN provides. You know, ubiquitous connectivity for one, things like disaster recovery, how you, get, you know, tackle those scenarios and situations. You need that satellite coverage and that's, that's going to be present as you move into 6G as well. Excellent. Well, I, I know there's a lot of uh, a lot of work that's been done quite successfully. A lot more still to do. But any summary thoughts you would leave us with? Yeah. So you know, people look at six G is is it another G? That's the big question that everybody has. People talk about sub terahertz. Of course, there's you know a lot of research going on. But there's a lot more. AI is coming very strongly into this already, and we see that happening even in five G advance, and it's going to carry on into six G. And then several of the promising things that were started out in five G will carry over into 6G and materialize more in 6G. Rick Smo is a very good example. The apps proliferation and then the crystallization of uh, the front hall is another one and you brought up NTN as well. Clearly that's going to have a major uh, factor as you move towards 6G. So I think it's starting, we are starting to see more of a convergence of things that were uh, seeded in 5G coming uh, to fruition in 6G. Excellent. Well, Kalyan, I really appreciate you taking the time to share your uh, perspective with us here at the Congress. Thank you, Sean.